Welcome back to my channel, everyone. Today's video is a very important video because we're going to be discussing what's in my bag, but not just any bag, not my purse or my briefcase, but what's in my emergency bag. And hopefully you will get some good tips or some good ideas about what you could pack in your bag and be prepared for any type of natural disaster. So let's start by emptying out the contents of this particular bag. This bag was purchased from Amazon, and I think that this bag is a really good starter bag if you're just getting started with collecting your supplies for a natural disaster or some type of an emergency, and you'll see why in just a minute. I'm gonna open this up and empty out, see what we have. So the first thing in the bag is a whistle. I don't know if anybody thought about it, but this would be a good thing to have in your emergency kit. It always reminds me of the movie Titanic when they were out in the water and all she had was to blow a whistle so that somebody could find them, right? Next is some face masks. Obviously, this is a necessary thing that we have to deal with right now since not only would we be dealing with a natural disaster, but we're also in the middle of a pandemic. So we've got some face masks here, and it would probably be a good idea to have some in here that were washable. These are the disposable kind. I'll note too that this bag is supposed to be equipped for two people. This is supposed to be an emergency bag enough for two. So it has two rain ponchos, We have a first aid kit, which will have some band-aids and some gauze and uh, a little bit of alcohol swabs and some ACE wrap. So this would be good to have in your emergency kit. I would probably wanna add some more things to that. These are nice emergency blankets. These are the aluminum blankets that would it seems like they wouldn't keep you very warm, but according to emergency kit people, they actually do better than the most of our blankets that we have in our homes now. So a little pack of tissue. I know I would need more of those. Light sticks. This would be good to have, especially if you are in a vehicle emergency. Uh, this is some emergency food rations. I have no idea what this is. It is hard as a brick. Um, I guess we'd have to look at the instructions to see how to prepare this and how to eat it. It doesn't appear to be very appetizing, but obviously it's nourishing enough to keep you alive or sustained during an emergency situation. And there are two of these bricks that come in this bag. And the last thing that comes in this bag yeah, an emergency box of drinking water. This is pretty cool because it comes in individual pouches. And it has some instructions on the back of what it can be used for in addition to drinking. But it says on here that this is potable water, so this is drinkable. And it looks like this is a pack of 12. So that would be six packs for each person, according to this emergency kit. So like I said, this is a good starter kit. It comes from Amazon. I will leave the link in the description box below if you're interested. But what I really wanna show you now is this big kit right here that has a lot more of the supplies that I personally think that we could benefit from in case of an emergency. Now inside the bag that had these masks, I failed to mention that it also comes with two sets of rubber gloves. And so that's important to have in an emergency kit as well. Some blue rubber gloves here. So we'll wrap that up, set that aside. And let's go back to talking about this food again. Because I'm, I'm concerned about this food. 
It says on here that this has a five year shelf life and that it is non thirst provoking. So it's not going to make you thirsty when you eat it, which, you know, you only have a limited amount of packets of water. So that's good. But included with this is actually five, no, it's six, basically like energy bars and they're vacuum sealed. So that's why it's so hard. I would imagine that once a little bit of air gets to this package and it's opened up, that it would be a little bit softer and easier to consume. So it's energy bars and it says that the contents are soybeans and wheat. That's what it contains. Some of the ingredients, I won't read all of this, but it says enriched bleach wheat flour, niacin, reduced iron, thiamine, and folic acid, and some other things that I cannot pronounce. Sugar, high fructose corn syrup, uh, soy flour, and so on and so forth. So. Be mindful that if you are allergic to any of these ingredients or if maybe you have a gluten-free diet or something like that, you might want to consider replacing the food that comes with this smaller emergency kit to getting some food items that you can actually consume and then won't make you sick while you are out during your emergency. Okay, now this one, this is pretty heavy. But I want to show you some of the outer features of this bag before we go inside the contents. First of all, I really like this bag because it's larger and it has more compartments, many more zipper compartments where we could store more of the necessary things that we need and that we should have in our emergency kit bags. You'll also notice about this bag that when we turn it around, you see that it's on wheels. So it's just like, you know, with the luggage, you pull this up and you can roll it as opposed to carrying it as a backpack. It has both options, but I think that it would be very convenient, especially for someone who is a senior citizen or maybe has a disability, it would be much more convenient for them to be able to roll their emergency kit as opposed to having to carry the burden or the weight of it. If you haven't already to take out some pen and paper and start to make a checklist of things that you would like to include in your emergency bag and hopefully you'll get some good tips maybe we've thought of some things that you haven't thought of and of course if you have some additional ideas that you think that we should include in our bags feel free to leave comments in the comment section below. I think that this is a place where we can all help each other and get some really good ideas. I wanna to mention too that it doesn't matter where you live, everyone is encouraged to have emergency kit bags or a go bag. Nowadays, with the times that we're living in, the Bible describes these times as the last days or critical times, hard to deal with. And we're noticing that these natural disasters are popping up in places that have been unprecedented before as having an issue with natural disasters. Take for example, just last month in Texas, Texas was dealing with a deep freeze where all of those people and many of my friends lost power for several days straight. That's unheard of. In Texas and where I live here in Georgia, this is definitely a hurricane or tornado prone area. Sometimes we even have to deal with what they call 100 year flooding that happens once in a blue moon, but it just so happened to have occurred here just a few where years ago. Live. It doesn't matter if you think you live in an area where you are predominantly safe and you don't have to have an emergency kit. I can remember being here in Georgia and there was a snowstorm that basically paralyzed the entire city. My husband was trapped out on the road in his truck, his work truck, for almost 12 hours before he was able to get home from what normally would have taken him a 30 minute ride. So you just never know what kind of an emergency you may be faced with and it's a good idea to have 
emergency kits like this in both your home and in your car. So now let's jump into this big bag and see what we've got. The first thing that we see in this smaller pouch is uh, some snap lights. We had these similar glow sticks or snap lights in the other bag. Now the contents of this bag, you can purchase a lot of these things separately. This particular bag was purchased from a website called emergencykits.com. That's emergencykits.com. And as we go through the contents, you will see that it comes, that we can get use some extra features in here too. So this whole packet is full of those glow sticks. Into the larger section of the bag, uh, we have some safety goggles. And I'm gonna pull out these little nylon packets. Now these little packets are very nice, even just within themselves. These packets or sacks are separate. They're sold separate. They're from the same company, emergencykits.com. But when you purchase the bag, these pouches do not come with the bag. You have to buy them separately. Inside each of the pouches, these are some good things to remember to pack. Now we're all encouraged to have at least a three day supply of food and clothing while we are away on our emergency. In the, inside this first pack, I'm going to share there's some personal items that you may or may not have thought of to pack in your emergency kit. The first one is wipes. Also, if you have a menstruating woman in your household, it would be a good idea to have some feminine products, liners and such. If you have a small baby in your home, make sure you have some diapers in the bag for the baby. And then of course too, if there are seniors in your home, senior citizens, they too have some supplies, personal supplies that they may need and you wanna make sure that you pack those too. Perhaps some uh, supplies for incontinence. Moving on to the next pouch, some personal toiletries. Maybe you're being sent to some sort of a superdome or an astrodome or a place of shelter. You're going to want to have some of these creature comforts, like your own washcloth, some toiletries like your toothbrush, toothpaste, deodorant, maybe a small travel size one, that's a good idea. Q-tips or cotton swabs. I'm not sure what this is, but maybe lotion or whatever it is that you need. <clears throat> Some mouthwash, a bar of soap. An, a disposable razor and any type of face cream or medication that you might need for your skin. So these are all small things that pack very well into these little pouches that you can have as your own personal toiletry bag. And you won't have to necessarily drag your entire emergency kit bag to the restroom. Just take out the individual pouch that you need when you need to go and freshen Okay, up. this next pouch is important. This is a food pouch. Let's see what's in here. We're encouraged to have some non-perishables. And if we choose to pack our own food as opposed to using the, the supplied food that comes with the emergency kits, these kits are designed to have food that has a shelf life of like five years or more. But if you pack your own food, you're going to want to make sure that you check the expiration dates on a pretty regular basis. These foods will go out of, <laughs> that's funny, but it's important to me too. There's candy in here. I mean, everybody gets a little sweet tooth from now, from time to time. So I don't think that's such a bad idea. But check your expiration dates. So we've got tuna. That's always a good emergency kit favorite. 
and is very nutritious. There's some sardines here, three cans. And these are big cans of tuna, you know? Um, if you're going to have canned food in your emergency kit, obviously you're gonna need a manual can opener, not an electric one because you might be in a situation where there's no power. So a manual can opener, don't forget that. And oftentimes we pack the food, but we don't remember to bring the utensils. You need a little fork. You could eat out of the can if you want to, but I'd prefer to have some utensils and maybe even a small little plate or bowl, All right? And we've got some granola bars in here. That helps too. So we'll repack this. The bottom of this bag still has room for a whole nother pouch. This one is empty right now, but I'm sure we could find something useful to pack in this one. Now here's a good idea. The smaller bag from Amazon did not have enough room necessarily to put three days worth of clean, dry clothes. But this bag, however, on the other hand, has plenty of space. Let's see how we pack this. This is a good idea to use some of those space saver bags because you can pack three days worth of clothes in this small bag. This one is the size small, 40 centimeters. 60 centimeters. It's a 16 by 24 inch bag, space saver bag. And what you do is you fold your things up, you stuff them in the bag, and then this is the area where you vacuum seal it out. I'll show you how this works. Unscrew this cap. Got my vacuum here. <laughs> So these bags are great, not just for vacations or for storing things in your home, but they are also great for your emergency kit bags too because they're waterproof. I feel like there would be nothing worse than being out in an emergency and your current clothes that you're wearing are soaking wet, you're cold, you're just chilled to the bone, and there would be nothing more comforting than to be able to reach into your emergency kit bag, get freshened up, and put on some clean, dry clothes. Let's try to get everything packed back in this bag. Just the way we found it. So we got the clothes. Empty one on the bottom. Food. Toiletries, safety goggles, personal items. I'm going to show you. It zips all the way open. See how that's all packed in there? all stacked, nice and neat. Easy to grab from these handles, little, like pull-out drawers, right? Zip all that back up. Oh, one second. Inside here is another zipper. This is a good place for paperwork. Now included with the paperwork, you want to have some copies of your identification. You want to have insurance information. So that should be your homeowner's insurance, your car insurance, and your health insurance. You also want to have your advanced directive form or a copy of your will and your last wishes, 
And if you also have life insurance, which is a necessary thing to have, copies of your life insurance information as well. And I thought this was a good idea. Include some photographs of family members. What if you get separated and you're unable to speak, but someone is trying to help you to get connected or reconnected with your relatives or family members. Maybe they need to take one of your photographs and post it on some sort of a bulletin board so that you can be matched up with where, whoever you need to be with. So I thought pictures, that was a really good idea. Pictures of yourself and your closest relatives. It would also be a good idea if you could, if you could laminate these forms. Um, this one is showing to be in a Ziploc bag, which is good, but sometimes Ziploc bags, if they are submerged in water, it may not be enough protection to keep your papers dry. So I would recommend taking in each individual form and having it laminated just to give you that extra layer of protection. So I thought this too was helpful, an emergency kit first aid guide. Sometimes when we are in an emergency situation, we don't always know how to properly take care of certain types of wounds. Maybe it's a burn wound, or maybe it is um, a certain kind of cut. No matter what the situation is, even allergies and choking are all covered in this book. And some of us are certified in CPR and we're able to administer CPR to help someone to begin breathing again. But what if it's been years since you've been trained how to do that? It's helpful to have a little booklet like this that can help you right on the spot when your nerves are going crazy or you're very scared. This would be good to have this so that you could follow the instructions on how to do these life-saving techniques step by step. I should also mention too that along with your important paperwork, be sure to have copies of your prescriptions. If you're taking any type of medication that requires you to have a prescription, you may not always remember the medical term or name for that type of medicine, nor might you remember your dosage, your exact dosage amount. So if, if at all possible, have the copies specifically from your doctor that will have your medication needs. Let's see what's in this pouch. Aha. Uh -huh. So speaking of medication, there is some more first aid kit supplies in here. Band-aids, gauze, alcohol. There's a CPR mask in here. That's helpful. And then look at this. Tweezers, little scissors, you know, if you have to cut the gauze or cut the bandages, the wrapping. There's packets of aspirin, that's smart. A tongue depressor or whatever you need to use this for. Uh, the tape more q-tips hot cold compress that's good to have some more gloves there's vinyl gloves in here anything that you would need to care for a wound including medicine you could pack it in this area here if you are using prescription medicine it would be a good idea to have an extra amount of your prescription medicine packed in your bag because what if you're not able to get to the pharmacy right away so it would be a good idea especially if it's something that is um, like diabetic medicine maybe you have to take insulin or maybe you have to take something for seizures that an EpiPen um, anything like that allergy reactions if you can possibly gather extra of that right now and put it away in your emergency kit, and of course too, keeping in mind to check the expiration dates on those things as well, they do expire and you will have to change them out from time to time, but better to be prepared than to be sorry. Let's see what's in these side pockets. I love all these compartments. 
Ah, now we're getting into some tools. Here's a flashlight. This is a cool flashlight because this is sort of like an all-in-one type deal. It's a flashlight, but it's also a radio, an AM FM radio. And let's see, what else is on here? It has an alarm if you need to set an alarm. It's on a, it has a kickstand. So if you needed to set this down and be doing or working on something, it has a kickstand for that. I like it too that it also has this wrist strap so that you can be hands-free while you walk or hike or do what you need to do. But this is a really nice kind of flashlight to have in your emergency kit. And of course, if you're gonna have a flashlight, you have to have some backup batteries. Oh, that, this is not the batteries. I thought it was the batteries. This is a nice tool to have also. This is one of those all-in-one tool kits. Still in the wrapper. It does, I don't want to take it completely apart, but it does a little bit of everything. It can be pliers. See there, the pliers, the needle nose pliers. It can also be different types of screwdrivers. So... We have the um, Phillips screwdriver. It looks like this one might even be some sort of a bottle opener. Um, different types of tips that can be used for whatever you need to use it for. There's a serrated edge there if you needed to cut something that was maybe a very strong rope that needed to be cut. And on this side, more of those different kinds of blade pieces that you can use for all different purposes. The brand on here, it says Ready America. And I think that this is a brilliant stainless steel multi-purpose tool. Really good to have in your emergency kit bag. Look guys, another whistle. Jack, Jack, come back. Okay, another compartment. Oh, this is smart. We got some duct tape or electrical tape. You never know what you might need that for. And some heavy duty gloves. Now, earlier we talked about those little rubber gloves that come with the, uh, the part for first aid. But what if you have to do something that's a little bit more strenuous and you need to protect your hands? I think these gloves are a smart choice to have packed in your emergency Get around kit bag. to the other side. The only thing, the only drawback that I have noticed about this particular bag so far is that the wheels that are on the bottom of the bag, can you show the wheels down here? The wheels that are on the bottom of this bag are not the same size as the little kickstand feet that are on the bag. So therefore, the bag sits lopsided like that. And if you have heavy contents in here, I'm sure that it easily tips over. Ugh. I would love that the manufacturer of this bag would make it so that the kickstand feet are level with the wheels so that this bag can sit up in a straight. Now let's check out what's in this pouch on the other side. Okay, another one of those survival blankets. That's good to have. What are these? Two more ponchos. And I'm not sure what this is. It maybe it's just some little plastic bags. Maybe you can use them for trash bags. Um, I'm not sure, whatever you need to use it for, but it's handy to have these. And then in here, oh, here we go. More personal items. So this could be for if you need an inhaler, some more medication, some eye drops, uh, nose spray, sanitizing hand wipes, and some of those masks. So this is, this is more personal items 
but I love how each of these areas is compartmentalized so that you can put what you need in a certain area and know exactly where to go to find it and you don't have to dig through your bag trying to get something that's on the bottom of your bag. You got it conveniently packed. Flip this around here so that you can see. I'm not sure what what this is, but there's another zipper compartment and pull this out. Oh, how cool is that? Guys, this is like a cover for the entire kit, I think. So that you can wrap the whole bag. Cover the whole thing up. You see that okay? Yeah, it says emergency on there. I also think that it would be a great idea if you could, ahead of time, have your bag embroidered with your name on it. And um, you don't have an embroiderer or some sort of a patch. Maybe you could use a luggage tag to identify your bag. You could even use a black Sharpie marker, but definitely put your name on your bag so that if you and your bag get separated, you'll be able to get reunited with it and get they the contents. I have noticed that there were a few things that were missing from our bags. We know how we are about our electronics. We live in a tech world today. We need our phones, we need our chargers. So it would be, certainly be a good idea to have a backup charger for your cell phone. Um, you want to have whatever additional devices that you use with your cell phone, whether it's your ear pods or your, your headphones. If you have extra of those accessories, find a space and pack those in your bag too. Um, also, it would be a good idea to have some type of puzzles or reading material. Maybe you like to do crossword puzzles or maybe you like to read the Bible. Whatever it is that will help you to pass by some time and not be totally bored, that would be a good idea to pack some types of things like that in your emergency kit bag too. Also, let's not forget about our pets. We love our pets. Our pets are sometimes just like members of the family. If you have a small pet that you're able to scoop up in a case of an emergency and take with you, you're also gonna to wanna to have an emergency kit packed for your pet, which is also going to include some dog food or cat food, bird food, whatever it is that you, your pet is. Bring your food and the supplies for keeping your pet clean and healthy during that time of an emergency. If you have a pet or if you have an emergency where it is just unreasonable to try and bring the pet with you. I know pet lovers may not want to hear this, but the safest thing for us to do is to just set them free. Open the door, let them go. Dogs and cats and other animals are instinctual. They have the ability to flee from dangerous situations, even sometimes better than humans do. So it would be a disservice to our pet if we are putting human lives at risk in, in, at risk in order to save our pet when we could simply just open the door and let them out. Also included with our paperwork, we might want to have just a blank pen and paper so that we can write a note to someone. Maybe we're needing to meet them somewhere or maybe we're leaving information as to where they can find us if we have to leave a certain location. So just some blank pen and just paper. Just a list of that. emergency contacts. Go ahead now and think about ahead of time who you would need them to be contacted in the event of an emergency. Write their phone numbers, write their addresses, so that if you don't have your phone, but maybe someone else is doing all the calling on your behalf, oh, and put their relationship to you as well, 
so that someone else can make those calls for you in the event that you're unable to speak. In addition to that all-in-one little tool that we had packed in this bag, it also might be a good idea to have a pair of pliers, um, a more heavy duty or type of tool. What would this be used for? Well, maybe you're in a situation where you have to turn off some sort of a gas line outside of your home in order to prevent further emergency damage. So someone pointed this out and I thought this was a smart idea to have in our kits as well. So friends, I hope that this video was helpful for you. I hope that you got some good ideas of things to include in your emergency kits. I hope that this helps you to be better prepared we certainly don't want to wait until the emergency creeps up on us and then try to get on Amazon or get on emergencykits.com and order these bags. Now is the time to try and prepare and have these things ready. So please, if you have some suggestions too, leave them in the comment section. All of us can benefit from this. Thank you for watching.